Sonny and Judy DeVetta, and the rest of Lieutenant Colonel DeVetta Wadden's family. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by Sergeant First Class Sharma McKenna Smith of MCOM G357, and remain standing for the invocation delivered by Air Force Senior Master Sergeant Mia Pruden. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight last gleaming whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, oh, the red parts we watched were so gallant 
least dreaming. And the rock gets regular, the bugs burst in it. Air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Who oh, say, does that star spangle? the land of the free and the home of the brave. Almighty God, today we come before you with deep gratitude in our hearts for all of the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We have gathered on this glorious day to recognize publicly that Lieutenant Colonel Darrell Gwyneth Devada Fadid has the skills, knowledge, and wisdom to be promoted to the rank of colonel. Let us remind ourselves today, lest we forget, that God brought each of us to our places of blessings and prosperity. Father God, we know that you have elevated her in the ranks. We ask that you bless her husband, Shane, and their two children, Cross and Santi, her father and mother, Sonny and Judy, her sisters, Kathy and Shirley. We are thankful for her family and friends and leadership, all of whom have supported her and guided her throughout her career. Colonel Devada Vaden will be entrusted with higher position of responsibility of leadership. She has been influenced by others in a variety of contexts that have prepared her for her new tasks of leadership. We pray that you give Gwen wisdom in the years to come. Father God, we ask that you be with her always in carrying out the duties of her new leadership role. Direct her, and by ex extension, all those whom she leads, O oh God, in all the decisions with which she will be involved in the future. Direct her with your most gracious favor, so that she may enable us to further our task of peacemaking. Father God, we ask now for your protection, courage, and watch care for all of our deployed brothers and sisters in arms. Bless them, their families, and this great nation. This we most graciously ask in your holy name. Amen. At this time, we'd like her parents and family members to please stand to be recognized. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Devetta Laden is presenting tokens of appreciation to her husband, children, parents, and sisters. The history of the term colonel traces its roots to the 16th century. The rank of colonel was popularized by the Spanish Torricos in the 16th and 17th century. Gonzalo Fernandez de Cordoba divided his armies in, into colonels, each led by a coronet or colonel. The use of colonel became more widely widespread as many nations fought all over Europe. By the late 19th century, colonel was a professional military rank though still very uh, held typically by an officer in command of a regiment or equivalent unit. As European military influence expanded throughout the world, the rank of colonel became adopted by nearly every nation under, uh, under a variety of names. The United States rank of colonel is a direct successor to the British Army rank. The first colonels in America were appointed from colonial militias as reserves to the British Army in American colonies as the American Revolutionary War began and colonial legislators would grant commissions to men to raise regiments and serve as their colonels. Thus, the first American colonels were usually respected men with ties in local communities and inactive in politics. After the war, the rank of colonel disappeared and was not reintroduced until 1802. The first insignia for the rank of colonel consisted of gold epaulets worn on the blue uniform of the Continental Army, and the first recorded use of the eagle insignia was in 1805, as official use of the insignia in two epaulets were specified for all officers, and colonels began wearing the familiar eagle insignia. 
that epaulets worn by the infantry were silver, while all other branches had gold epaulets. <coughs> In 1851, it was decided to use only silver eagles for colonels as a matter of economy. The silver eagle was selected based on the fact that there were more colonels with the silver eagle than those with gold eagles. The American Civil War saw a large influx of colonels as most regiments were state formations led by the colonel of volunteers. <coughs> World War I and World War II saw the largest number of colonels ever appointed in the armed forces. By the end of the Korean War, appointments to the rank of colonel were standardized to be granted roughly around 16 to 18 years of service. The insignia for colonel is the Silver Eagle, a stylized representation of the eagle dominating the Great Seal of the United States. The eagle has a shield superimposed on its chest and is holding an olive branch and a bundle of arrows in its talons. The head of the eagle faces toward the olive branch rather than the arrows advocating peace <coughs> rather than war. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Commanding General of the United States Army Mission and Installation Contract Command, General Bill Borf. Thanks, everybody. Hey, Troy, we've got everybody outside? Is there everybody in here? Put them all in. Put them all in. Just put them in. They can stack up over here, over there. They all, they all want to see this. Great support. Great family. I got to talk to them earlier. Uh, follow her whole career, and uh, family is the backbone. And so that you know, you know how I feel about that. And so you're blessed, Shane. You guys are a great command pair. As I told the family, I fought to keep her here another year uh, or two, hopefully a year. Uh, so uh, we did that uh, to, to try to get her ready to get, to get command. So keep our fingers crossed. The board's meeting now, and that's where we hope to go next. So. Um, Today's ceremony is a reflection of Gwen Devara Baden's dedication to the Army and our nation, and recognizing, not, recognizing her not only for her selfless efforts, but also for the potential to recognize she is ready to take increased responsibility. And that's what we talked about with the family. Uh, promotions historically always are about increased responsibility. And moving from the uh, field grade level to the executive level is a major step. So, uh, so we're looking forward to that. So, I mean, she may not be, but that's what her dad was talking about. And her mom said that means a whole lot more headaches. I was like, yeah, that, that comes with it too. So, <laughs> so welcome to Shane being here by your side all the time. He, he was, got to talk to him a lot at the last holiday party. So it was great, great seeing you again. Uh, the children across the Santee. Shane retired after stellar 25 year career in the military, in the army. Uh, and, and it's funny, I'm gonna get to her father in a minute. He's in the Navy and he's got the army pin on. I was like, what happened? He goes, well, everybody, everybody that I love now serves in the Army, so I'm in the Army now. <laughs> yeah, works for me, too. So, uh, so and, and Shane volunteers a lot with the Boy Scouts and, and Girl Scouts, and so he does a lot for the community, not just uh, being a, a good Army uh, uh, spouse, but also being a stellar uh, pillar in the community. So thanks for that, and, and that that's part of being, you know, executive level, having that kind of support at home. So. Well done there. Uh, I, I, and again, I want to uh, welcome Sonny and Judy uh, as they, they came from California. So uh, I guess I guess everybody came from California. So yeah. uh, so and, and, and Kathy and Shirley. I'd also like I'd also like to recognize, uh, uh, as I said, Mr. Varro from from his retirement from the 20 years in the Navy, 20 years in the post office, and Judy was 32 years as a nurse. So uh, stellar type of careers that give back to the community so you can see kind of where the foundation started for Gwen uh, and and it's important to kind of recognize that and thank, thank you in front of everybody so well, well done um, and I love this quote from Ger General Oriano and so I like to say just about every ceremony uh, you know the the strength of our nation is our army the strength of our army is our soldier and the strength of our soldier is the family and clearly you can see that with the family as I got to chat with them today and meet everybody. And so uh, thanks for being there and uh, understanding and being supportive of your soldier, your wife, your mother, your daughter, and your sister. I know she's put, uh, uh, she has put in many long hours providing exceptional acquisition support to the Army, and you guys and gals have been there supporting her, so thanks. Uh, Foreign Press Class Smith, thanks again. Wonderful rendition, uh, as always. Really good in this room, so I mean, I think that was great for everybody. So, 
and uh, Master Sergeant uh, Pruden for the uh, white, wonderful words. I told her before, I said, I'm looking forward to it already. Uh, I knew when you have a guest speaker coming in that's close to the family that gives a prayer, it's always, a, it makes the, uh, this is not going to be grammatically correct, but it makes it a little more special. So, so uh, and I want to thank everybody that put the ceremony together, uh, you know, Maybe do a little better analyzing of the size of the room, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> As I said, EW uh, she started she started out in operations. She's done a stellar job. Uh, uh, just so you, have, you know how it really works at the general level, I begged Major General Simpson to keep her. It took me three weeks to break him, but he let me keep her. <laughs> so uh, as you know, uh, she's taken over Colonel Jackson, stellar. Performer in Army as he uh, transitions out back to Mississippi, and he was able to teach her and <coughs> mentor her as the three, and now she's going to step up and be the chief. She taught me, sir. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. She does the same for me. So. Yeah. So uh, promotions are about recognizing the soldier's outstanding uh, performance and the demonstration of potential for future success. Wins a California native. As North Carolina, I don't like saying that, but she's from California, so all her family. But so is Sergeant Major, so I gotta be careful. Yes. So, uh, so uh, we had a good chat about that. They actually kind of all are, are close together, his family and their family, so that was kind of neat. Uh, she earned her commission at, as she graduated from the University of San Francisco in 1996. She first served in the force development where she excelled and kept growing in positions of leadership in Korea, Belgium, Fort Bragg, uh, and uh, and forward deployed to Iraq. In, the in, her, in that branch, she received uh, the Adjutant General Corps Regimental Association Achievement Medal, Horatio Gates Bronze and Gold Medal. So, well done before she ever came to the Acquisition Corps. So that's good. Uh, you know, that shows she's always been a stellar performer throughout her whole career. She transitioned to the Acquisition Corps and continued to lead soldiers as a contract officer at Bragg, Iraq, Korea, and Germany. And she started her career in 2011 in acquisition corps. So uh, she was also the ninth recipient to receive the coveted exceptional contracting command contingency contracting officer of the year award. Uh, and that's a big deal for me because I was the first recipient of that. So uh, so the pressure's on. Keep going. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what you don't see in her biography uh, is the time and effort she's made throughout her career to shape, mold, and grow soldiers. Another approach that, that epitomizes is General George Patton's guidance to always do more than is required of you, which I think truly you do, so thanks. Um, she credits her drive and ambition to her parents, which we talked about, because they showed her the principles of hard work and selfless sacrifice for the betterment of your family and those you serve. So thank you. We talked about that in the room together too. The foundation always tells you what comes up the product. So in clearly it's easy to see here. Um, no, I lost my place in my speech, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna go with this one. Shane, she calls you her rock. And she says, uh, you know, you're the foundation. We've had a couple ceremonies and, and clearly you're here you went out and got the family at the thing you, you're the man that makes stuff happen and so thanks for everything you do for her and i'll let her <coughs> chat about that more when she gets up there so it is this kind of caring leadership that sets Gwen apart from her peers the army must be equipped to win in a complex world under widely varied conditions in unforgiving geographies and against evolving threats leaders such as Gwen are the type of soldiers our nation needs to fight and win in today and tomorrow. Because remember, the foundation of this promotion is all potential for the future. So we're, we're really focused on tomorrow. But we'll enjoy today. So every commanding general should have such an outstanding officer in the field who works so hard to accomplish our goals while ensuring our soldiers are ready and have everything they need to succeed. As Colonel Jackson said, I've learned a lot from Gwen uh, and the many projects she's done, and she keeps us informed, me and the Star Major and Mr. Cole, uh, our DCG that unfortunately couldn't be here today, but he wanted me to pass my best to you. Uh, 
Today we'll exchange those silver oak leaves and pin on those eagles on her shoulders. She's a competent, committed leader with great character and is most deserving of this next step. On behalf of the men and women of the Mission Installation Contracting Command, I want to congratulate you on your promotion. And I, I add about this, I, I put this in here because I wanted to say it. Welcome to the executive branch. It's a big step as you go from a field grade officer to the executive branch, and much will be expected of you. And we know that you'll keep going and you'll keep succeeding, and we look forward to the journey with you. So let's put on those eagles. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Daryl Gwyneth Devetta Baden. In view of these qualities and her demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, she is, therefore, promoted from Lieutenant Colonel to Colonel. Promotion is effective 1 October 2018 by order of the Secretary of the Army, signed Dr. Mark Esper. Lieutenant Colonel Devetta Vaden's uh, children will now remove the Lieutenant Colonel epaulets from her shirt and replace them with the Colonel rank. Sonny and Judy DeVetta will now remove the Lieutenant Colonel shoulder boards from her jacket and replace them with the Colonel rank. Military officer's oath is a combination of constitutional requirement, historical influence, and centuries-old custom. Though the first oath of office under the Constitution of the United States for officers, not commissioned officers, and enlisted soldiers dates back to 1789, the officer's oath has been changed over the years. The version we use today was approved by Congress in 1884. General Boroff will now administer that oath. I have been appointed officer. I 
who had been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States. In the Army of the United States. At the grade of colonel. At the grade of colonel. You solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution. The Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without mental reservation. Without mental reservation. For purpose of evasion. For purpose of evasion. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Carl. <laughs> Thank God, most of all. You got it. You can do this. Come on, boss. Boss lady. You can do it. Family and friends are everything. The community is everything. And I do everything, and I know, for everyone. And it's hard to say no, because I want everyone to win. Because when everyone wins, I win. Um, I want to thank my family who flew me in from California. I want to thank all uh, my relatives who came in from afar. I even had friends who told me last minute they flew in from Alabama. Ooh, 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 Jason K. Um, I'm glad you didn't bring. I mean, I, I, it was good that because they had a family of ten, so <laughs> he said he was representing for the ten. Um, I do have a classmate from University of San Francisco, so class of 1996. Woohoo! I'm Randy Dixon, so she retired from the, thank you, the Army this past summer. Um, friends and family from all my duty stations. Um, you know, the Army is a small world. The joint um, military and everything is a small world, so I've seen people come and go. Um, I love community service, so I, I have folks here from Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, and of course, um, my red, white, <laughs> red, white, blue, uh, red and white, my Delta, uh, oh my gosh, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Thank you all my sisters here, you see them in red and white. Uh, but, sir, thank you for all the mentorship. And continued mentorship that will need um, Colonel Jackson and many others above me. Thank you, and I will say this in a nice way the, for the tormentorship. You have to, you know Colonel Jackson, but everyone else. <laughs> but I, I take everything. I had something, but I, I, it's just. Emotional. So, thank you so much, everyone, and I look forward to continuing to serve and doing well. So, that's all. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the Army song. You will find the words to the song in your program. March along, sing the song, with the army of free. Count brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name, we're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. attending today's ceremony, you are cordially to follow Joan Boroff to congratulate Colonel Devetta Madden and her family in the congratulatory line.
There will be a reception immediately following as you exit this room to my right, to your left, down the hall. Uh, we'll be taking family photos, so if you could uh, please enjoy the refreshment. Just wait on the cake. She'll look at the cake after she's done with photos. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you again for attending. Contracting for Soldiers.
take a different walk. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.